Hi everybody, it's Sayward from findyourdivinity.com. Um, I am back from the woods and I am so excited to talk to you guys about the absolute catharsis that happened to me today. Um, to begin with, it is supposedly morale season and I didn't find shit. That being said, I will be posting pictures, you guys can see some lovely takes <laughs> that I was able to see um, on my walk, but I didn't find anything supposedly good. That being said, I heard a lot from Spirit today, and I think that that's more of why I was out, not so much that I was meant... <laughs> Every video, man, it's okay. Um, again, she's with her dad, she's fine, she's safe, but <laughs> I digress. So... I, I think that that's why I was out there. I was out there for those messages and to like kind of soak up some earth energy, which I've been desperately needing. Um, a lot of us are so needing that right now because we're in this quarantine, right? And, and in Mary, Mary, in many areas, um, you're not allowed to travel into parks and that sort of stuff. I luck out because I am in an area where I do have the freedom to travel to a park. Uh, however, that being said, I I still haven't really been getting out. And I think that a lot of us haven't been getting out. So it was really important for me to go out today. And like I said, also didn't find any mushrooms, but it was so meaningful. So when I got back from my path, as I was on my drive home, I realized that I had spent a lot of time in my youth youth, like my three and four year old, you know, time at a babysitter's house uh, due to a family situation. So I spent a lot of time at this babysitter's house and I immediately, when I thought about it, I remembered the name of the street, but I couldn't remember where the house was. I didn't remember the address or anything because I was so small at the time. I just remembered the name of the street. Um, and as I was headed out of the woods, something told me to start driving and I did. And I thought that I was driving home, but then spirit told me to start driving towards and on the street. So I did. I didn't know if I was headed the right way. I didn't know if I was headed towards anything meaningful. I had no idea. I just, something in my head told me that I needed to go. So I did. I made the turn and I started going. And I drove and I drove and I drove for a while, still not knowing that I was headed in the right direction, definitely going away from my house, my intended destination. Like I was just told that I needed to be driving. So I did and I kept driving and I kept driving and I'm like looking back and forth and I'm looking back and forth and trying to find this house that I remember. And as soon as I saw it, even though the deck had changed, even though there were different houses next to it and fencing that I wasn't familiar with, all of that, even though all of that had changed, as soon as I saw the house, I felt it. Like I just knew. So I went around the block because I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the house. I think that's the house. But when I looked at the next house to it, well, it had had a different sighting and there was a fence. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I, am I crazy? Well, I turned on the block and I looked and I, yes, absolutely. That's the house of the person that I used to play with. That's the exact same porch that I got in trouble for not showing up in time on. Like, that is the place. So I backed up and I went around and it turns out that this house is for sale um in my area so i'm not gonna buy it or anything because as you'll find out it's not necessarily a great place for me but it was vacant is the point so houses for sale nobody's in it i was able to go up there and go into the yard and look around and like really cement in my mind is this a house that i was thinking of in my mind and it was. So it's been like 20 years or more since I've been to this house. Um, and when I'm like walking around in the yard, I can see the old uh, clothesline pole and I can remember there being clothes hanging out there. Yeah, and I had to duck underneath them and I can look up and I can see the window and I'm like, yeah, that's where, you know, Aunt Sandy used to throw up the window and she'd holler out for me when it was time to eat. And I went to the back and I looked and so Aunt Sandy's yard was not very large. It was relatively a small little square, but the neighbor kid who was like catty corner, they had a whole bunch of kids there, like three or four. And so their parents were cool with people coming and going all the time. I was over there at the babysitters a lot. So a lot of the time 
I would like leave there and just walk across the yard and go hang out with my friends. Well, my friends had a really good, great backyard that had a swing set, a trampoline and all this stuff, right? So remembering this as me today, I'm walking around, I'm walking down the alley, I walk past my Aunt Sandy's uh, yard and I walk towards their fence and I look and I see there's a, a number of slats missing in the center of the fence. So I go and I look just into their yard, you know, I didn't walk into their yard or anything, but I looked and I could see that the swing set was there and it was broken down and I could see that the trampoline frame had been like all twisted up and it was in the corner and I could tell that those things had been there for a while. So I knew for a fucking fact that this is the house. Well, why is this house important to me other than, you know, I spent a lot of time there as a babysitter. Well, one time when I was very small, I was at the babysitter's house and, you know, doing the I'm being babysitted thing. So I'm just a little kid toddling around or whatever I'm doing. Again, no older than three or four. <clears throat> and the babysitter's son, Mike, is a very nice guy. But, like, I don't want you in my room because he's an older teenager at this point, right? It's her son, but he's still living at home. I don't want you in my room. I don't want you to go through my stuff. Don't touch my comics, blah, 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 blah. Um... So, so this time, Mike was outside, and he was going to, he was supposedly, like, playing with me. Like, you know, we're playing a game, and we're playing outside together, and we're being kids and stuff. But what actually happened is Aunt Sandy was like, well, will you watch her while I go make popcorn? Mike was like, okay. And he immediately, as soon as she was gone, he picked me up by the legs, he flipped me over, and he hung me over this fucking porch. So what I can remember is being like, no, 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 no. And then looking at the, being completely upside down, being completely out of control of my body, looking up slash what is actually down at this bed of rocks below. And he started swinging me and I'm like screaming and crying because it's not fun at all. I'm scared. I'm terrified to death. I just like, that's where my fear of heights comes from. Because I have this like very much in my head being a little kid. And I know that Mike thought that he was having fun. I know that Mike thought that this was like a, oh, look, we'll scare you. And ha ha, it's kind of fun thing. But it wasn't for me. It was like oh my god, you've taken my bodily autonomy, you threw me over a ledge, now you're swinging me and threatening me with death and laughing at me while I'm, while I'm crying, you know? It was very traumatic for me. So this house being empty posed a particularly poignant and important like moment in my life because when I recognized how short of a distance it really was from the ledge to the rocks and and how a person could have just jumped from that and probably been just fine. When I realized how small of a distance that was, I realized that it wasn't about how big the distance was. It was about how small I felt as a person. It was about how out of control of my body that I felt. It was about how when I screamed my fear call, that always had worked, instead somebody just laughed at me and continued this and even did more as I started to yell louder and louder. So this was one of the first times in my life that I could really remember having had a total loss of control and it it affecting me deeply. To this day, um, you know, I carry that image as I was able to easily explain to you what the thought is in my mind, what happened. I carry around that image. So today, after decades, again, I walked up the stairs and I stood on the porch and I just looked down. I looked right down at the rocks and I pushed on the banister and I pushed and I pushed and I pushed as hard as I could and I leaned over it, you know, and I reached. I just kept testing it and I realized that here today, I'm not gonna fall. I'm not going to let myself fall off of a banister. I don't have to. I'm not going to go crashing down into the rocks below. And while there may be a small part of me, that small child who was terrified and who did think that she was going to fall, now I know, and now I know that I can tell her for sure, you didn't fall, and neither am I.
So blessings to you guys all. I hope that if ever spirit calls you to take a journey, you do so. You never know what you're going to find.